From Naperville North High School, Sports Channel presents the Illinois High School Association Boys State Soccer Championships. The Eagles of Carl Sandburg High School go against the Vikings of Fremd High School. Well, winter has come to Chicago land. Temperatures are plunging through the 20s. The wind chill factor down around zero and more than a hint of snow in the air. Perfect weather for soccer. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Lederman, joined as usual for the Boys State Soccer Championships by Bob Dolasky, athletic director at Maine East High School. Bob, usually a downstate team comes up here and then beats the pants off everybody, but things have changed. We've got two Chicago land teams in the finals now. Well, it seems like history. Uh, Sandberg and Fremd have been rated right at the top all year long. And and the title is definitely coming north this year. Well, Sandberg rated number one in the state, only a tie to blemish its undefeated record. This is a team that is on a mission. They are on a mission, undefeated. They have seven shutouts through this, the course of the uh, tournament. A big game over defending champion Collinsville this morning. You can see the St. Joseph and the Foreman win. The Foreman win. The Public League champions went down eight to nothing. Uh, for the Friend High School uh, Club, well, they were here 10 years ago. Not the same team, obviously. These kids were in grade school. But, Bob, it was one long evening and a successful one for Friend. It was a long night, and Coach Pagnani was here eight overtimes and a state championship at his school. Big wins this morning. Evanston yesterday. They're ready to play, and they're a great team. Well, several key players to look for. First of all, for Sandberg, he is a two-time All-America and a big kid, Josh Feigl. Josh Feigl has size, finesse, power, 42 goals. He deserves everything that's been said about him. For Fremd, several people to watch, not the least of whom is Dennis De Silva, leading scorer in good bloodlines, Bob. Dennis De Silva is the son of a Batata, an ex-Sting player, very skillful, finesse-type player, scored a beautiful goal this morning. Number one and number two, dueling it out for the state championships. We'll have the starting lineups and the opening kickoff when we come back. Well, there's the scene. As you can see, the snow has stopped, but there's no guarantee that it'll be permanent. It has snowed some this afternoon. The field is in pretty good shape. It is uh, somewhat cold, not frozen, and the players say they are getting some traction. We'll see how the night wears on, how that affects the uh, footing here at Naperville North High School. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. First of all, for uh, the back line of the Sandberg Eagles, Mark Moraz, Tim Gira, Joe Donilon, Marty Regan, the All-Stater, back there at sweeper back. The midfield, Rakowski, Kolonitis, who is a junior. Tom Zeck, so is he. Brian Hertz plays more of defensive midfield. Frangella and Josh Feigl, the big gun right there. Uh, both these fellas can score and score often, the two strikers. The goalkeeper for Sandberg High School, Chris Pope. He has been in the nets all season long. He is running a shutout string and is looking to continue it here in the finals. Pope is a 5 foot 11 inch 175 uh, pound senior. Now for Fremd, their back line, Box Strite, Andy Tome, Chris Molenda, Molenda Jr. there in that line, McDermott, Conrad Taylor, Josh Little, Andy Gallagher, the midfield, and two fine strikers there too, Cesar Carranza and uh, the young fellow we talked about, the son of Batata, Dennis Da Silva. The goalkeeper, a former field player, but he has done well in goal. A very athletic soccer player, Mike Morrissey. Morrissey, a senior, and uh, he has got a goals against average of uh, just about uh, 0.8 goals per game. So he obviously is getting the job done. The officials, Eddie Rubin in the middle is the referee, Rubin Horna on the right side of your picture, and Tony Costantino are the lines people. Well, the snow is coming back. You see the temperature, 29 degrees. The wind is blowing. It's a crosswind blowing from uh, uh, the front of your picture to the back of your picture, and those snow flurries have been on and off all day. Sandberg in the white, friend in the green, and we are underway. Well, the cold weather didn't seem to be bothering both teams. Bob, as we talked about things with the coaches before the game, uh, Gerardo Pagnani over at uh, France and Brian Papa both seem to think that the players will stay warm and uh, might have more endurance when they have to play two matches in one day. Well, the, the adrenaline's pumping, and that, that keeps you warm. 
they've played very well uh, given the wind. The cold is one thing, but the wind is really disruptive, and, and both teams have played well given the wind. Sandberg, the number one team in the state. They are undefeated. 28 wins and one tie, but one tie coming here at Naperville North, as a matter of fact. That was a game uh, in August when the conditions were quite a bit different back then. This is Andy McDermott, fine senior midfielder, putting the ball in play in a direct kick. And they get it close to it had to be, and it goes through. But they're waving it off, no ball. Apparently, the keeper, the keeper was on the ball. The referee thought he had control. And uh, it'll be a goal kick. Ended the play there, so there was a foul. It looked like McDermott, Marty Regan right there for Sandberg take the goal kick but uh, close call right away and certainly would have been quite a shock to number one ranked Sandberg to be scored on so quickly and they hadn't been scored on since this tournament began. You know a string of 11 straight shutouts seven of them in the tournament. Uh, this is uh, Tony Frangella for Sandberg coming down the right side and the tone pursuing the ball across the end line. I think that was a wake up call for Sandberg real early in the ball game. Now we're going to get a corner kick right here. There is from coach and the veteran Gerardo Pagnani, a former Canadian Olympic player, Olympic, uh, I should say, national team player for Canada. Headed inside and we get a goal. A goal for Sandberg. It looks like Josh Feigl. Feigl right away with not even two minutes to go with a minute 53. It's either Feigl or Colonitis. And we'll have to check it to be sure. Here we got it coming up right off the corner kick. Nick, Nick Colonitis, who takes all of their corners. Beautiful headshot right into the corner. Goalkeeper could do nothing. Well, Feigl got the head on it. I haven't even seen Colonitis yet. One minute, 53 seconds into the match. It certainly looked like Feigl got the goal at this point. Uh, I think they're still saying colonitis. It is Feigl. It is Feigl. Goal number 43 for Josh Feigl. And what a way to start. To go with 13 assists, that gives him 99 points for the season. But again, we have to get confirmation of that. If we take a look at the replay again, it certainly looked like it was Feigl's header went off the defense. And... Uh, into the top right hand corner of the goal. It was right off the corner kick. Here it is, Colonitis on the corner, right to Feigl. And notice the defenders right in the right spot there may have even come off of his head. Absolutely. So the goal is to Josh Feigl off the assist from Colonitis. And the second minute, actually a minute 53. Now the Eagles will uh, take the throw in. And that's Colonitis number 10 marked by Chris Molenda. And here come the Eagles again. Feigl tried uh, looking for Feigl on the left wing, but cleared by the defense. Very aggressive play immediately, uh, Bob, by uh, Sandberg. I think some of the things that uh, Coach Pagnani feared are happening. Uh, Sandberg is bigger than uh, than his players, and, and they really they were wakened up uh, early, pushing up hard. Kevin Bach tries to clear it, and it's sent right back in by Marty Regan, the All-State sweeper for Sandberg. Back down to Cubs with the Eagles trying to mount an offense. Josh Little, number 11. Looking in for uh, Conrad Taylor. Cleared out by Sandberg again. Well, but Taylor gives pursuit. Conrad Taylor, number eight. Five foot seven inch. Oh, he probably hasn't gotten as much uh, press as, uh, as, as De Silva and some of the other people. But Conrad Taylor has shown me a great bit early in this tournament. A real hustler. One nothing Sandberg. About five minutes into the first half here. Again, high school rules, two 40-minute halves. And taking the real header for Sandberg. 
by Colin Ivers in the middle. Kept in by Kim Guerra, number 13. Over to Colin Ivers, number 10. Cutting across. Right now, Friend is uh, getting lured into playing Sandberg's game, which is uh, faster, longer passes. Friend likes to play short passes. And there's Brian Papa. He's waited a long time for this. Looking for that championship. Brian Papa, 10 years at Sandberg. A couple years before at Bloom Township High School where he started the program. And interestingly enough, uh, never played soccer, but has turned into an excellent coach, uh, contrary to Coach Pagnani, who was uh, an excellent player in college and up in Canada. National player for Canada. Also played at uh, Eastern Illinois. Along with the current Eastern coach, uh, Chisa Mosnia. And brother Rice coach Nick Markulin and uh, Shellis Hinman at Southern Methodist. Eastern had uh, real strong programs back in those years. 1 0 Sandberg. This is Taylor for Fran. Taken away by Sandberg. And Joe Donnell, number 14, tries to get it back. It is taken by Andy McDermott for Friend. Tries to get it up. And we'll have a throw in for Sandberg. And back it'll go to the keeper. Chris Pope had a scare early on as uh, the ball went past him. But the, the official, Eddie Rubin, ruled that he had possession long enough. So it is 1-0 for the Sandberg Eagles as we have played about six and one-half minutes here. In the state soccer championships. This is Tony Frangella. That goes out of bounds, so we'll over the touchline, throw it for for friend Kevin Bach. Yeah, it yeah. It's time to cross over for uh, De Silva. De Silva coming down. Galanta tried to get a shot off into the defense and headed away in there by De Silva. Carranza number 10 for Fred trying to pursue it. But... There was a foul on Carranza, but uh, of all the all the Viking players so far in the tournament these two days, he is uh, he's been number one on my list. He's just played very, very well. Set up the winning goal this morning with a fantastic trap and, and pass. Carranza, senior, five foot seven inch senior. Four friend. About eight minutes gone here in the first half. It is one nothing for Carl Sandberg of Roller Park against Friend High School of Palatine. And this is Marty Regan. Booming it out of there, looking for Brian Hurts. Hurst plays that uh, defensive midfield, broken up by Andy Gallagher for Fremd in the green. Sandberg in the white, Fremd in the green, and there is Gallagher again, trying to send it down over to uh, Carranza, but it's broken up again by Fremd. Down it comes. There's Kevin Bach, the defender, and here comes Tony Frangella. Frangella, we got a whistle right here. It's going to be a foul going against. And uh, another good opportunity for a set piece here for Sandberg, just outside the penalty area. Good look there at uh, Toby Frangella. Nick Colonitis, who, uh, who takes all their corners, they're lined up back. They'll make a run toward uh, the close post, I think. Be looking for somebody big up there. Colonitis shoots away direct, but it is too far, too wide. Shooting it into the wind still carried over the crossbar and Feigl fought his way through the wall there a little bit uh, too energetically got called for a foul Feigl, a very physical player but uh, he doesn't stop there 131 career goals here in high school We're looking for Frangella again for Sandberg it'll be a throw in for Frem. It comes to the midfield, Carranza for Frem, still holding on. Back to Chris Molenda. Molenda trying to set up Andy McDermott. And a little bicycle action there by uh, 
Mark Moraz. Sandberg is putting pressure on. They're not allowing uh, the Vikings to string those passes together. That's, uh, that's what they prefer to do, and they're just not letting them get, uh, get a series of passes to move up the, up the field and hit some uh, midfielder overlapping. Ten minutes gone in the first half. Carl Sandberg yeah. of Orland Park in the white, leading 1-0 over Friend of Palatine. Friend and Green trying to mount an offense. Conrad Taylor, Josh Little, yeah. number 11 for Friend. Yeah. Headed away there by Kevin Bach. And after that first flurry, Bob, uh, things have been pretty much confined to the midfield for the moment. Yeah, it's an interesting flow in the game here. <laughs> Real quick, and, uh, and then uh, the other uh, the Eagles come right back to score, and then we've just kind of been uh, tit for tat here. Sort of like the snow, it comes and it goes. Again, trying to uh, go on a run is Frangella, then we get a whistle, and we get a foul against Tiny Frangella. Now we'll get a direct kick here for the Vikings. Mike Strike, the defender. Strikes it right footed and it comes right back at him. Mike has done an excellent job through this uh, tournament to really come into his own. McDermott trying to get the ball to midfield, broken up again by Sandberg, and here comes Nick Colida, Colonitis. Colonitis looking down on the left wing for Mark Rutkowski making the run from the midfield. And Rutkowski right puts it, but well inside in the first. Goal kick for Frem. If Sandberg can keep this kind of uh, pressure on in the offensive third so that they don't allow uh, Frem to build with those passes, Frem will be in for a long night. Sandberg's Colonitis. And again, looking, breaking down again was a Mark Rutkowski on the left wing. But Sandberg could not get the ball to him. This will be a throw in coming up again for Frem, which trails one nothing. Sandberg was having a problem scoring at least until the quarterfinal game, where they erected for eight goals against the public league champion Foreman, and that's what the starters sitting most of the second half. That was a uh, that was a record, I believe, for the, the final. Record for two teams. <laughs> <laughs> the old record for two teams had been seven, and here they broke it. A couple of other records set in that game, the most assists in one game. Uh, Tony Frangella had three, and. Josh Feigl had three goals and a hat trick. Down to cops here is Feigl. Feigl one on one there with Andy Tom, and we got a whistle from the goal here against Josh Feigl. He, uh, he had his arm out and was leaning on him a little bit too much trying to turn the corner. Well, Feigl at 6'1, close to 200 pounds, kind of 5'8, 170. Here comes Josh Little coming down the left wing for Fram, trying to chip it up left footed. Nice play by Taylor, but coming up very quickly was Chris Polk. Nice little one-touch there. Taylor couldn't get quite enough on it, and Polk was there to cover. Still 1-0 is Tom Zeck for Sandberg. Let's take a look at it again on the replay. There was Conrad Taylor lurking right in front. So here comes the cross. Right here. Here's Taylor. Didn't quite get all of it, but he was sure in the right spot. Under 26 minutes to go. Sandberg still with the one to nothing lead. Here is Franchella to get a whistle. He's going to go against the Eagles. And we'll get a direct kick for the Vikings. Strike sends it down. George Ryan hurts. Hurts goes up to head of the yeah, yeah, by yeah. Lyle Green. And coming out to Chris Molenda, number 17. Molenda 
looking now for Dennis De Silva. De Silva has to go across the goal line and the call will be a corner kick. The first corner kick now for Frank. Good hustle to make something out of really nothing going away from the goal that really wasn't a threat to get a corner kick out of it was um, made it a worthwhile effort. De Silva left puts it on the end, swinger looking up, hit the top of the crossbar. Goalkeeper uh, did, did all he could do. Here it is again. Keeper up and punching it over the top, catching a bit of the crossbar, giving up another corner. This one's in swinging. And McDermott will take it. And headed out of there by uh, Mike Moraz. A good Sam hustle Bird. from McDermott there. Then putting on the pressure here offensively. This is De Silva. He's being marked by Gira. And the throw in will be still for Valentine Frem. Gallagher over on the left side, headed away again. That's Taylor in the box. Taylor being pursued. Still Conrad Taylor dribbling nicely around uh, Donnellan. And now he right puts it in, the header up by uh, Andy McDermott. And not much on that one. It'll be a goal kick for Carl Sandberg. Very nicely played there as uh, the defender stepped over the ball. Mark Rakowski and let it go out. Uh, save some time, take a little of the pressure off. Well, if I'm Jerry Pagnani, I'm feeling a lot better about my team right now. That was a good offensive effort, several good chips, a few good runs, kept the pressure on, even though they didn't get anything out of it. Now here they come the other way. Coming down is Frangella, and cleared again by the defense. Well, the key to that rush, I think, was that they kept the ball on the ground, and they started to work a couple short passes. They can't cope with Sandberg's size uh, if they leave the ball uh, up in the air and try to long ball with him. Sandberg on the throw and headed away by Frem. And here comes Brian Hurts back for the Eagles. Carranza and Carranza on a run for Fremd over to Taylor and Taylor being pursued and we get a whistle over here it's going to be a and they're going to call the direct kick a foul will be and there is Taylor who is slow getting up Brian Hurts over there putting a little muscle on him Hurts again close to 200 pounds and Taylor about 140 there was definitely a foul on Hurts and then he tried to take a dive and maybe uh, let somebody think that he was the one who was offended and he landed right on Taylor. That hurt. He, Taylor goes down. Hurts kind of trips also and lands on him pretty hard. Meanwhile, as they come back to live action, it'll be a direct kick just outside the penalty area for Palatine Brown. We've got uh, Carranza there. We've got the Silva. The Silva. Let's see what uh, what they throw. And probably McDermott. Is that McDermott yeah, there too? McDermott as well. I would look for McDermott to take it. He hits cannons. He is on the far left there. Caron's in the middle and uh, De Silva on the right. So they run up. And there is McDermott with the cannon and again off the crossbar. You can't get it any more in the corner than that and not put it in the net. Here it is. Look at this angle. Right over. Bends it beautifully. Top two inches of the crossbar. That's a heartbreaker. Polk did not have a chance on that one. Here is Tom Zeck. For Sandberg, throw in for Fremd. Josh Little. Over it comes again to De Silva. And back McDermott. Mark Rakowski now trying to run here. He's got some room. But it's broken up nicely by Sandberg and kept in. Over the touchline, it will be a throw in here. It looks like for Rutkowski, but the officials are saying no. It is. Rutkowski is going out. Right. We've got a substitution here. Rutkowski comes out. And it looks like Sam Cortez, a junior, 155 pounder, will come in. He is number two. And the action continues. Andy Tone, right footing it over the touchline. And uh, 
Again, it'll be a throw in for Sandberg. We got another substitution here. There's a good look at Cortez. Brian Papa trying to keep the uh, the pressure up and, and getting a couple sets of new legs in there. Donnellan will throw in here for Sandberg. Looking inside for Feigl, but it's broken up again. Here is Tim Guerin, number 13, for the Eagles. And again, a whistle will be a foul against uh, Palatine right. France. Halfway through the first half, Sandberg with the 1-0 lead. The goal in the second minute by Josh Feigl off the corner kick. And here now, Fram will take this one. Uh, check it, Sandberg will take this one. And Colonitis is there. Along with Josh Feigl. And Marty Regan up there, the sweeper back. This is Colonitis. Overruns it. Feigl to Colonitis, play a little two-man game. Colonitis on the cross. Looking over there for Sam Cortez, right over the crossbar. With the score 1-0 Carl Sandberg, let's take a break for just a moment. Ball goes back in play with under 20 minutes to go here in the first half. Carl Sandberg and White leading 1-0 over Friend High School of Palatine in the green. This is Tamayo for Sandberg, number eight. He is in a substitute. And De Silva going back uh, in defensive territory to come out with the ball on the run. Over to uh, Carranza and Cesar Carranza looking up for Taylor. Friend outnumbered there and it's broken up by the defense, Joe Donnellan for Sandberg. And Josh Little again for Friend trying to get something going. Friend is uh, dropping a lot of people back uh, on defense, sometimes uh, seven, eight people. It's hard for them to counterattack because there's nobody in the midfield. They've got uh, Taylor and De Silva up front and they can't really sustain a rush. Here is Carranza now, trying to run. No foul there, a, uh, a dramatic, dramatic drive. The ball was already uh, pushed along. It looked uh, maybe like there could have been a foul there, but I think because he'd already pushed the ball and didn't have control any longer, referee let that play go on. Well, after the first offensive rush, uh, Palatine Fremd has done well containing the offense of Sandberg. They have taken more of the offensive pressure right now than uh, the Eagles have. Ball in the midfield now, goes over the touchline. It'll be a throw in for Sandberg. Yeah, they have, uh, through the first 20 minutes, Fremd has six shots and Sandberg has uh, only two. And one of those is in the net. Down it comes. This is Frangelo for Sandberg, marked by Kevin Bach. And the Vikings of Fremd will have a goal kick. Both these are veteran coaches. Pagnani, 14 years at Frem. Brian Papa, 10th year here at uh, Carl Sandberg High School. Been a head coach for a total of 14. Here comes Frem again. This is Josh Little, number 11. Tries to go into the middle for De Silva, broken up by Mark Moraz of Sandberg as the snow flurries start to come down again. Footing so far has not been a problem. Kevin Bach on the throw in here for Fremd. And that is Andy McDermott trying to dribble around, sending it over to the left wing, and back it comes. As the ball in the midfield. Over to Taylor. Taylor, a nice move to get out again. Still has it. Good dribbling by Taylor. Gets it back over there to Carranza. And 
Toronto trying to make something happen, and we'll be uh, friend on the throw in. I saw a glimmer of what uh, Fremd is, is better at. They did string four or five passes there, but they're still hanging onto the ball too long, too many dribbles. They need to go quick triangle passes, keep the pressure on, and uh, I think that will be better for them against the taller, stronger Sandberg Eagles. 15 minutes left to go here in the first yeah, half. Sandberg yeah. and with the one to nothing lead. And back it comes to the defense of Fremd. And here comes Sandberg again trying to mount an attack. Up it comes here. And Josh Fryder check it. That's uh, Dave Knott who's come in. Not playing on a bad ankle, but he is here and overshoots it right there as uh, Frangella couldn't quite get the header up. Toronto number 10, and we get another whistle. It'll be a foul. And a quick restart. Now they'll slow it down. Carranza very active in the middle, along with uh, De Silva. But Carranza's really been making this team go, as you said, Bob. Carranza's very stocky. He shields the ball very well. Here's McDermott laying it up in the middle. Carranza tried to get a header on it, and back it comes. This is uh, Nick Colonitis looking up for Andy Knott. And it's broken up by friends number 15, Andy Gallagher. Nicely Here done. Come with a two-on-two. Two. It's going at us again, and it's broken up again by the defense. Looks like McDermott got in there. And we go the other way. Looking all the way down for Taylor. And Taylor will really push in the back, no call right there. And finally, uh, Sam Cortez comes and breaks it up for Sandberg. Down goes McDermott, no call. Play getting a little bit ragged here as we come up to 13 minutes to go in the first half. Sandberg with the ball. Taken away over there by uh, Gustavo and also uh, Andy Tone. Yeah, the fatigue is beginning to show here in the last 10 minutes. Uh, will show in the last 10 minutes of the half. Again, the format of the state tournament. Uh, they play one game on Friday, one match on Friday. And they'll come back to the semifinals in the morning. And tonight is the final. So you're talking about three matches in about a 30-hour stretch. Interesting thing while we set up for this goal kick here, uh, that long run that Taylor just made. Normally, last year, the defender would have just touched that back to the keeper, and uh, it would have been dull, but it would have been safe. This year, the keeper cannot handle a ball that's been passed back by uh, one of his teammates. So it makes it more exciting and opens the game up for more offense. Yeah, so it's a good rule, I think. Yes. Uh, so you don't get so much dead time as right. the goalkeeper and usually the sweeper back play uh, the soccer equivalent of pitch and catch. And even taking it out to the side is, uh, isn't that safe because with uh, the distance that they can throw these days, that's a threat as well. And the ball in the midfield now. Here is Carranza. Carranza mocked up for Torres. Carranza down the run. Looking for Andy Gallagher. And this is Gallagher with Cortez on him. A fly in tackle. And we get the foul on Sam Cortez. Mike Lederman, Bob Belaski. Our sports channel crew, Jim Porno Jr. leading the truck. We hope you're enjoying this one. From a very chilly Naperville North Field. Temperature game time 29 degrees and sinking rapidly. And here's McDermott again. He uh, remember he put it right up the crossbar in that upper right corner a moment ago from about the same place. Wall needs to move back and give him 10 yards. Not Cortez and Frank Jell, the wall right there. And joined over there by Figa. Check it. And here he goes again and again. It's over the crossbar. It might have been three points in football. Yeah. That one was uh, not quite as accurate, but uh, well, he's using the wind well. That wind yes. was blowing in that direction. He's trying to hook it. Right. And there is the assistant coach, one of the assistants uh, over there at Sandberg, but a good name in Northern Illinois soccer, Jim Pisani, who's a teammate of our director, Jim Cornell Jr. They used to play together for Willie Roy. And now Pisani, a uh, varsity assistant here at Carl Sandberg High School. Here is Carranza. Just a little too far to his left. Just passed as uh, Hope didn't have the angle on that one at all. Gets up quickly and takes a beautiful left-footed shot. 
That was from about uh, 35 yards out. That was a waste. Marty Regan again. Coming up to the 10 minute mark here in the first half. And this is David Knott trying to ride off Chris Molanda. And Knott comes away with it. Molanda comes back. And we get a whistle right here. So it'll be a foul against Molanda. And Sandberg. We'll get the free kick, and here comes Regan up to take it. Marty Regan, six feet, 145 pounds, all Midwest player on the Olympic Development Program. And they set up right to come left. Swings it in, breaking it from the back side was Feigl, but broken up nicely by Palatine Fram. The first runner was a decoy. Lukowski had a poke right there, and it was off the defense. This will be a corner kick. Well, and is coming up, too. Let's take a look at this one again, and this one was a lot closer. Comes across right there for Rutkowski. For Rutkowski. The Here comes the in-swinger on the corner kick. And uh, there's Rutkowski again. Rutkowski doing some dribbling, and he shoots on goal, but Mike Morrissey is right on it. Didn't have quite enough behind it, but a nice move by Rakowski, who had sat for a few minutes. And he is back. There he is. There's Mark. That rest up, put a little strength in his leg. He got a corner kick and two good shots on goal there in about 20 seconds. There comes McDermott. Check it. It's Mike Strike. Tries to get it up. And this is Kalanza number 10. Looks inside for Strike. Coming away with it is Witkowski, who's been all over the field the last couple of seconds. Here's Andy Knott, trying to take on two defenders. And up it goes for Frangella. Frangella left puts it right into the defense. And up and over the back of David Knott was Chris Morunda. And this is going to be up because now it won't be a counter kick. It was just outside the medical area. But Chris Morunda did it. Like a he was just frustrated a moment ago with the foul. Uh, the size is getting the better of him and uh, had to go up over the top of somebody who's about six inches taller than he is and came down a little, little excessive. Well, it's Feigl and Regan back there and now being joined uh, by at least to my number eight. Melinda is, uh, will have to go out with that yellow card at uh, they did yell about 32 started. minutes, yes. In high school, you do have to leave until at least one whistle. And the next time you can substitute, he can come back in. A little play here. Uh, uh, quickly, a substitution coming in for... That substitute hadn't reported, but because there was a yellow card and there had to be a substitute from uh, Sandberg, uh, Chris Jerry Pignano. There's Chris Giulio, who is a senior. Okay, they got the three Musketeers back there. Feigl booms it straight on and straight on Morrissey. That was a rocket, a grass cutter. Well, Morrissey equal to the task, and he clears it out. And back it comes again. Under eight minutes to go first half. Still 1-0 Sandberg and White leading over Frem. This is uh, De Silva and Cesar Carranza, number 10. Carranza looking for Taylor, and it's broken up by the defensive Sandberg. That is Tim Gura, and down he goes. And a good foul against uh, the Vikings again, of course. You don't want to see the play get chippy. But the, uh, as you said, the coaches were telling us, Brian Papa, and especially uh, uh, Jerry Pignani, that they feel uh, physically that they are outsized by Sandberg. Yes. Down for a little. Chris, Normally, Carranza would have hit that ball square over to him, his uh, his midfielder on the left side, and they try to work it up patiently. They, they're not showing the patience that they need to play their game. McDermott here we're going to see it. To Carranza, and here they work the touch. A little too far from McDermott, and it's cleared again by 
Sandberg's defense. Here comes Rittkowski. Rittkowski with Gallagher marking him. Down it comes to Frangella. That's taken away by Mike Strike. Strike got the biggest of the He had two people on, on a person on either side. He could have touched it to and he tried forcing a 40-yard pass and it was easily won by Sandberg. Nice play there by Gera, breaking and splitting two defenders. Getting the ball up will be a throw in here for Sandberg. There's a look at Chris Giglio, a senior. Spot player for uh, Jerry Pignani. True name, Gerardo. Which he told us his wife pres uh, prefers, right? Now we certainly don't want to get in trouble with her. <laughs> Here comes Andy Tome. For Frank, then again. And he'll throw in for Sandberg. Five and a half minutes to go here, first half. Halftime, we'll be talking to Marty Hickman of the Illinois High School Association. An interesting subject. We uh, know you want to catch this. All the many issues regarding the influx of foreign students into the Illinois High School Association. And how and when they become eligible to play uh, team sports. Again, the play in the midfield here as the pace has slowed considerably for the moment. We say for the moment. The one goal coming in the second minute off the head of Josh Feigl. And there he is. He goes right up on the back there, no call. There's De Silva trying to get something going as he comes way back from the striker spot. Four friends. And uh, Jason Brother, number nine in there for Sandberg right there goes down the line. Right. Right. And here comes Palatine again. They need to string at least three passes to break somebody free, and I been counting for the last 10 minutes and the most they can get is two and then they lose the ball it's just uh, too much pressure on them at this point and they're getting more and more impatient well Taylor's doing a lot of running around back there but he hasn't been able to uh, work it that well with his teammates and De Silva has been marked very closely and he has not been able to spring free four minutes now to go first half up it comes this is Tim Guerra another Olympic uh, development player for Brian Papa. And we get a foul here. And there's a handball on, uh, on Dave Knott. Dave Knott, it's good to see him in the lineup. They were worried about him. He uh, turned over his ankle in the semifinal. They did not think he would suit up. But he's in there. Then again, how many chances do you get to be in a state championship? You probably have to take that ankle apart before he sits down. You don't have to put much ice on it tonight. No. <laughs> well said. Consolation for third place. Uh, last year's defending champion Collinsville won one nothing over Brother Rice. Collinsville takes third place after two first place finishes in 92 and 91. Not a bad three years. One out the coach. The Cahawks. The trip will be a little longer back there, but still they come away with something. Under three minutes to go now, first half. There's a good look at Kevin Bach, who's done some good work on the back line here in the first half for Fram. There's Feigl, and down goes Josh Feigl. Again, I hate to belabor the point, but the, the more they can't spring passes together, the more each one of them decides, I'm going to have to do it by myself. If we can't get two or three or four passes together, I'm going to have to take on people by myself. And that's uh, that's not their style, and that's going to hurt them in the long run. That was a close-up there of Josh Feigl. And if we can take a look at some of the backs of the heads of these Sandberg players, you'll see they've all, well, they haven't Dennis Rodman their numbers, but they have uh, put some glue some colored glue, and they've got their numbers planted, if you will, on the back of their, front of the nape of their necks. You can't get them slow down enough to see it, but you have to trust us on this. <laughs> yeah. Here's a good look at Josh Bygo. He's uh, got a lot of schools interested in him. 
along with a couple of his teammates. We can, we can always be on the cutting edge of the hairstyles when we get to the Absolutely. state tournament. Feigl, the Sun-Times Player of the Year, two-time All-America, over 130 goals. Not a bad four-year career. He started as a freshman. Hasn't been on the lineup since. Here it comes up front. Hope backs it away. Coming up here is Josh Little, and Josh Little gets clean and cleared away by the defense. Coronitis. Now we get a whistle. A foul against Witkowski of Sandberg as we're into the final minute here in the first half. One nothing. Sandberg in the lead. They scored in the first two minutes. Off the set piece, off a corner kick. There is McDermott. Andy McDermott. He could boom it in. Floats it up. This one's close. And Pope, I tell you, Bob, he slipped through that one. That one's a net. He wanted to make it look like he really wanted to catch it up that high rather than in his yeah. uh, in his tummy. From about 55 <laughs> yards away. And Sandberg here after the foul. We'll get a kick, a direct kick as we go into the final 20 seconds here in the first half. one nothing. Sandberg the lead. Sandberg and White. Bobby Regan gets it up quickly to Jason Rutter. And Rutter loses his footing there, and this should about do it. Pursuing the ball is Carranza. That is the end of the first half. Both teams will go to the locker rooms with the score. Carl Sandberg High School won. The Vikings have friend nothing. The only goal, as we told you, in the second minute, 153. The corner kick by Colonitis, headed in by Josh Feigl for goal number 43 for Josh on the season. And that is where we are right now, halfway home. We will be back with halftime activities in just a minute. Time at the Boys State Soccer Championships here at Naperville North High School. I am joined by Marty Hickman of the Illinois High School Association, event coordinator of this event. And Marty, obviously, it's typical Chicago weather, but uh, other than that, I assume the tournament's gone well for you. It has, Mike, and you're right. Much like last year, we're into a little snow for the championship game, but it, the tournament has gone well. We've had some great soccer and some great matchups. You know, there has been an issue and a controversial one that I wanted to take advantage of you here and ask you about, and that is the whole issue now of more foreign students coming over, specifically you have the Bosnian basketball players, and some right. are eligible, some are not. Right. Is this a particular problem, or is it something that uh, you've dealt with and have rules for uh, going back to uh, years and years? Well, I, I think this is an issue that's relatively new, but we do have rules that govern this type of thing. These technically are not foreign exchange students. They're foreign students who happen to live in our country, and under our bylaws, uh, there's a big difference in that. And in this situation, these kids have legal guardianship uh, now established. We determined that they did not come over for the purpose of playing sports in our school, and uh, we ruled most of those kids eligible by the second semester and some eligible beginning the school year here. I would assume then that there is a danger of some coaches trying to take advantage of these rules. How do you police this kind of thing? Well, we're very, very conscious of that, and, and that was a big concern in this particular case. I think the, the biggest way we police it is that we're a self-policing organization, and we put a lot of faith in our member school principals and athletic directors and coaches to make sure those kinds of things aren't happening. But in addition to that, uh, we took a lot of time investigating this, and Dave Fry, our executive director, talked to a lot of folks about it. And again, just to briefly recap, the issue were, was a group of players from Bosnia coming over, uh, various ages, various school years, and some can play and some can't. Right, and they were members of the junior national team in Bosnia. Right. Okay, Marty Hickman, thanks so much, and we will have more from the Boys State Soccer Championships in just a minute, so stay right with us here on Sports Channel. Well, there's the halftime score. The Eagles of Carl Sandburg High School won nothing over the Vikings of Fremd High School. These teams rank one and two in the state with Sandberg on top in the polls. And right now on top in the score, Bob Delasky, uh, only one goal, and it came rather early, and it came off the corner kick. Colonitis in the corner, all the way over to Feigl. Notice him going around the back door, and it looks like it hits off of Andy Tome there, just... Uh, just out of reach of the keeper. 
and that was uh, in the first two minutes after Andy McDermott had missed one down at the other end uh, that looked like it was in the goal. Feigl's 43rd uh, of the season, and it puts him uh, on a history-making crew right now. And his 132nd goal of his high school career. And there are the statistics for the first half. Trev showing a bit more offense. A lot of fouls for both teams. A lot of fouls, and again, uh, Fremd, even though they, well, they had the wind, but they didn't really play their style of game. We'll see what they do against the wind. Uh, remember that the goal that Sandberg scored was into the wind. That freak, that happens all so often. Temperatures are dropping, as we told you. You see the occasional snowflakes. Still, it's a lovely night if you've got a lot of blankets, and we'll have the second half for you in just a minute. That's a good way to keep warm. Get close together and jump around. Those, of course, the cheerleaders from Carl Sandburg High School. They have a lot to cheer about at this point. Their team leading, but certainly not a safe lead at one to nothing as we get ready for the start of the second half here at the 1993 Vermont High School Association Boys State Soccer Finals. I want to tell you right now, the broadcast rights for the IHSA Soccer Championships have been granted to Sports Channel by the Illinois High School Association. And a reproduction or rebroadcast of this event without the express written consent of Sports Channel on the IHSA is prohibited. I'm Mike Lederman, along with Bob Delasky. Our spotters in the booth, Jack Ferraro for Sandberg and Dan Conan from Friend High School. And there are... The Eagles of Sandberg leading one to nothing. You can see in the back of Mark Burkowski's head. You see that four? Now they all put their numbers right in the nape of their neck. That's why they call it Naperville, I suppose. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. Lines like that, you know why Vaudeville died. And there are the Vikings of Friend High School, and they are keeping warm. A team that knows it's got to uh, get its offense going there. And you can see Carranza has also... Uh, Done a little Dennis Rodman turn right there with the number 10 there on the back of his neck. Well, Sports Channel's coverage of World Cup qualifying action continues on Wednesday, November 17th at 1 in the afternoon. We'll take you live to Portugal as Portuguese hosts perennial powerhouse Italy. That's 1 p.m. Wednesday, November 17th, right here on Sports Channel. All kinds of soccer action for you. And we've got it right here now as both teams are out for the second half. Sandberg again in the right, is on our left, and on our right, the two goalkeepers, Mike Morrissey for Friend, and Chris Pope, who's still working on that shutout streak for Sandberg. Both these uh, netminders have been in goal all season long, and no one else has gotten any significant playing time for either team in goal. And the interesting thing about Morrissey is that he's a former field player, and he has so they uh, flew a goalkeeping situation for uh, Gerardo Pagnani. We are underway here. Brian Hicks, number 22, and this is taken away now by Andy McDermott. And sent down by Frank. Coming up here is a job beautiful for Fram, along with Hertz, and Hertz wins the battle. But back it comes to Kevin Bach. Bach, the stopper back for from High School. Over to McDermott, and he collides with Hertz. Now we're going to get a whistle here. And Hertz is fouled here. I know Friends got a score they want to settle with Hertz, but yeah, not that way. <laughs> dangerous play there. Regan. Just on the follow through. Morrissey's there. Start of the second half. The only goal coming at 153 off the corner kick. Josh Feigl sent it, it, out, it, out. it into the top right. And it's one nothing Sandberg. Good this way for better than 38 minutes. Throw in here for the Eagles. That's uh, Mark Moraz, number 12, one of the backliners. And he gets it up to Tom Zex. And he has been going for the front row. Vikings get the ball. This is Little. And that's it. 
Something's got to get back here. And they obviously need to switch it to the other side. There's some bad decisions being made along, the, along this touchline. They need to get it over the open space. And Dillma tries to, but it's kept right back in there by Rutkowski of Sandberg. And back it comes over on the left side to Davy Knott, who's played significant minutes even on that bad leg. Rutkowski over there again. Uh, this is uh, Donnelly for uh, Sandberg, taken away by Andrew McDermott. Something tells me if uh, anything's going to happen on Sandberg, it will start up and put it in front of him. You know, the strikers, as we were saying, Bob, you were pointing out how little, how little passes are going on. A lot of dribbling up on that front line. Yeah. It might look pretty, but it uh, certainly has to develop an opportunity for uh, the Miami's offense. No, I'm just, uh, they've had a couple of times here that they've strung three passes, and then they've gone to a long pass, and the, and the bigger defenders on Sandberg's back line are able to handle it easily. Carenza and, uh, and De Silva are at a physical disadvantage when they get in there with those bigger players. Now they're both 5'7". Some of the back line is there. Some of the defenders are over six feet. Here comes Cesar Carranza, and he is tripped up. No call, maintains possession. Good no call by the official, as Brent is still on the attack here, but he's taken away by Zek. Zek now has got some open space. He also looks up. And that's Feigl. Feigl being marked by Andy Tong. And here is Feigl. Taken away nicely by Brent. Here comes to the Silva. De Silva with Morales on it. Back it comes to De Silva, but cleared away by the defense. Andy Regan there to sweep it away. Last, last night and this morning, those passes would have worked. Tonight, they're, uh, they're just missing their mark. Fatigue effect. Mm -hmm. Again, with three games in 36 hours, it's got to take its toll somehow. There's the throw from Sandberg. They're going nicely by Tom as Tom can't control the ball. It will be a throw in for a cross Sandberg high school. Well, they change their mind. De Silva throws in for Palatine, Brent. Carranza again, a nice dribble, but Reagan is there to pick up the loose ball. Brent will keep possession here with five minutes gone by. One nothing. The match still led by Sandberg. And we're pushing it back there with the Mirage. Here we go with McDermott. McDermott again. Some good he, position. You know what he'll do. <laughs> he's, yes, going, do. he's going right at it. Nothing subtle about Andy McDermott's right foot. This time he swings it in. Looking for Carranza there, but he can't maintain possession. It'll be a goal kick for Sandberg. I think he was a little surprised that that got to his head. Uh, I, don't, I think he expected somebody in a white shirt to be up and over him on that, and uh, he really wasn't prepared to flick it on. Here's Marty Regan, the low liner. Goes past five like here. Again, Regan will try to get up to the midfield. But it's taken by De Silva, and again De Silva now looking for Josh Little on left wing. Hey. Back it comes. Great number five for the Vikings. And here comes Melinda breaking up Davy Knott's attempt there with the left foot. Very nice series of passes right there. Very dangerous. There's a good look at Dave Knott. Throwing it in, looking for Feigl in the middle, but again broken up. Taylor tries to take it away, and... We'll get a throw in here for Trent High School. Alonso trying to get it up to uh, Carranza. Over the touchline. 
again, Sandberg is uh, trying to do something that hasn't been done since 1973. That was the only time we've had a, an undefeated state champion. That was Harrison High School way back in 73. They were 17-0-2. Is that the second year of the tournament? I think so, yeah. There's a short punt out by both. Here they come on the attack again. Down goes not. No call here. And once again, that's Colonitis. And he couldn't get much on the ball, although there was some open territory. And deflected out of bounds. We'll have an in-swinger from Colonitis over on the right wing. Again, a dangerous situation. This is uh, the same kind of thing that uh, created the goal. Colonitis, a junior on a senior-dominated team. They did this from the opposite get the goal and now they set it. Watch the box because Feigl's in the middle there. Now they break the play again to send Feigl around the back side but this time it was right on goal and Morrissey got up and made the save. Keeper's at a big disadvantage because with his back turned, he really doesn't know which way he's going to go with it until the very last split second. Here's Colonitis again trying to dribble. And left puts it on goal. Mike, Mike Marcy making the stop. Burkowski now. Here's Mark Rutkowski. And the duel is on with Carranza. Carranza tries to get it up. Looking for a little, and Josh Little keeps it in play, but it's taken away there by, uh, by Tom Zeck. Take this throw. Here's Tom. And chipped up by Donald. For Sandberg. In fact, his opposite number 14 for the Vikings. For the Vikings. Under 29 minutes to go here. The game remains 1-0. Melinda and not dueling there. Over the touchline, we'll have a throw in here for Frank. Good save in there by Donald. Sends it down. There's Feigl. 
And Morrissey had to uh, come outside the penalty area and kick it away. Obviously, could not use his hands there. And Feigl prevented him from taking it back into the area where he could have picked it up. So uh, it's still an opportunity here for Sandberg. That extra little bit of effort shows up. It also is eating up some time that Sandberg uh, appreciates. Donald and tries to center. On goal is Colin Idos. And Morrissey with the answer. Another low rocket from Colin Idos, but uh, Morrissey was not shielded there, so he had a good look at it. He did. He did. Taylor on the throw. Peter Pinion, the center. And he is in for a solo. Pushing a little push against Fran. I think uh, Pinion got right in there uh, into the action. He's in the box score now. <laughs> Marty Regan. Back. We'll take this kick. 26 minutes left in regulation here. The Kings have got through a lot of defenders, but sent right back strikes away, and there he goes again. This time it's up to Brian Hertz, and Hertz keeps the ball in the midfield here. Tim Gira sending it up on left wing. Not much sustained offense from either side so far, second half. No, I think uh, the fatigue is, is just, nobody wants it back in their end. They're just clearing it. Nobody really, uh, Sandberg is content to, to keep it away, and, and uh, Fremd hasn't really put, again, their, their philosophy to work here. That's Zek having taken away. And Josh Little's trying to get something on the door. Once again, his Mirage. Sent it up and again over the touch line, rolling once more for the Vikings of Friend High School. One of the things that Friends a friend likes to do is to overlap McDermott up on the outside, but they've been playing an awful lot up the middle of the field. Um, they've made the field smaller for themselves, and it makes it easier for the bigger Sandberg players to, to fill that space and steal the ball. Taken away from Carranza, sent back and sent right back out again in midfield. McDermott dueling along with uh, Tamayo, who's back in, who's Tamayo. And here is De Silva. Dennis De Silva with some running room, but does not have a good angle. Being pursued over there by Donnellan. Leaving it back, but there are no green shirts in that area. That's the longest uh, run of the half for either team. Yeah, it, it looked like a threat, but the silver was too far out on the side, and, uh, and there wasn't anybody over in the middle that he could get it to. Fifteen and one half minutes gone here in the second half. There's Sam Cortez, who came in as a substitute in the first half. He is back here in the second for Sandberg. That's five goals on the year. Cleared out by De Silva, looking up for his teammate Carranza, and De Silva's got it now. And Carranza on the left, but again, a lot of white shirts to break it up. Uncharacteristic of De Silva to take a shot from, from 30 yards out there. And again, I think they're thinking, I've got to do it all myself. Well, the last team to score on Sandberg happened back in October. And that was down as Grove South. Yeah, that was a regular season game. They made up for it uh, in the second round of the regionals. They blasted in 6-0. <laughs> they don't like to be scored upon. They've gone 11 in a row without allowing a goal. 11 matches in a row. Trying to set it in front for De Silva. 
check it. That's from McDermott. And it has been taken away by Brian Hurts. He's been really backstopping all night long for Sandberg. Up it comes Tim Gira. Gira has got uh, Fiegel with him. And Josh is ridden off there by Mike Strike. Excellent defensive play by Mike Mraz over there. Defensive play over there by Moraz. And cleared up by Sandberg, tipped in by Carranza. Carranza left foots it, centering across. And here, once again, is McDermott. And McDermott with a clean shot, but it whistles high over the crossbar. Goal kick coming up. We'll take a break right here. Sandberg leads 1 0. Back to action. You haven't missed the thing. It's still 1-0. Carl Sandberg on the strength of Josh Feigl's goal in the second minute. Leads the state championships here at Naperville North High School. I'm Mike Lederman along with Bob Delaski, our Sports Channel crew. On a night that uh, is clear and cold, punctuated by some light snow flurries. The weather certainly uh, has not been the factor you might think. Players prefer this to... A slop of rain and mud, which we've had here too, Bob. Yes. And Morrissey there making the pickup. Twenty-one minutes to go here in regulation. You know, the most unlucky player uh, so far has been Andy McDermott. Uh, he just whistled that one over a minute or two ago. Of course, it was Cesar Carranza who, again, was just never stopped digging and, and created a, the third real good opportunity for uh, McDermott. Saw him over the back of Feigl here, and you can see uh, Andy gets his money's worth. Whoa. Yeah. And a running start, and even Feigl, who's a rock, about 200 <laughs> pounds, gave in here, but took one for the club, and now he will have an opportunity, along with Marty Regan, to see what he can do. Swing it across. And that'll be a goal kick here. Looked like some dominoes there as Colonitis hit that ball. There were two or three players uh, got legs tangled and went down and the ball harmlessly rolled over the end line. Under 20 minutes to go here in regulation. Good look at Mike Morrissey, the senior keeper, trying to clear things up and clear things out for Fram. But quickly, this is Brian Hertz heading it back in. Hertz again looking for Fido. Feigl looks for Colonitis, and Colonitis takes a good belt from about, oh, 28 yards or so. But wide of the goal. Here's Josh Feigl. A lot of schools would like to see him come there to play soccer. He'd like to stay around the Midwest. Going for the Vikings. Kevin Bach to throw it. Be again a throw in for the Vikings. And so take it out. Andy Gallagher will take it. Again, a mental mistake over there by Andy Gallagher giving up the throw in, costing his team not only possession of the ball, but probably about 20 seconds here by the time the throwing gets off. Very little offense from either team here. Sandberg with the one goal lead in white. At this point, not sitting on it, I wouldn't say that, but uh, they are content to make the Vikings work. Keep clearing their zone. 
Head had uh, colonitis has been busy. He's had five shots this half, so that's where most of the offensive opportunities have come. Here comes the Silva. It's taken away again. This is uh, Tamayo. Back it comes looking for Franchella, but it's broken up by the Vikings of front. And that's a name we haven't called much tonight, Frangella, who's been very active uh, the other two games here. Another one straight play. Joe Bryan Pump. 17 and a half minutes to go here in regulation. Josh Little being marked by Cortez. And Little can't control. will be a throw for Sandberg. Cortez now has got Feigl. Feigl's got some room here. Tom trying to run up his back. Gives him a push, no call. Cross in front. Beautiful play. Ball still loose, and it goes up. We get a foul, and let's see. See, Morrissey is holding his back. He's in big pain. Josh Feigl is down. Maybe cramps if it's so cold, but boy, what action okay. here. Feigl up the side. Crosses it over. You get a... Uh, Collision coming up right here. Very close. Very close call. And Frangella, who we hadn't called, hits the post and puts it off. But I think the foul had been called there uh, against Morrissey. So uh, there will be a free kick for the Vikings. Again, Feigl is over here on the sideline. Stretching out. I think you're right. It's a cramp. Well, you take a knee in the back like that. This kind of weather, especially, it'll just knock that muscle up. Yeah. Well, foul was on uh, Sandberg as the ball was cleared by the keeper. He's fired. Well, we couldn't really see. It was too close to go. I think it was Tamayo who came across there. Back the keeper. He's in the McDermott now. The clock running at 16.30 left. one nothing Sandberg leads. Here's a shot on goal from way, way out. And Pope, no problem there. Well, I was about to say that that might be out of McDermott's range, especially the fact that he was going into the wind. But, boy, he, uh, he hit that one 65 yards. We mentioned it's a crosswind going from the bottom of the screen to the top, but it is angling away from that left side goal. Down it comes Carranza in pursuit. Too far over the touchline again. Sandberg will try to start its offense. Fifteen forty-five. There's Tamayo. And again, he is called for an improper throw in. Again, there wasn't a problem throw, and that was only the first for Tamayo. Friend had been penalized the last time. And they're all there against Friend. So, now as you look at Tim Gira, there will be a free kick for Sanford. 15-15 left on the clock in regulation. Gira working for Zek. Back it comes to Rudder, and Rudder tries to back foot it. And here comes Carranza with the one touch, looking for De Silva. De Silva goes down along with Regan, Marty Regan. This foul, that was a, uh, Melinda got a pretty hard foul on Melinda. Again, that's, uh, whoa! His, his third or fourth one, uh, I think he needs to be careful. I think uh, referee Ruben is making Look, a mental note of that. Going for his pocket. Remember the, the headlock that he put on, uh, yeah. on Feigl in the first half. Here's Josh Feigl, number 15. Been pretty well contained. He's had a couple of good shots on. Of course, he's had the goal. Now he will come out, it looks like, and be replaced by Dave Knott. Perhaps some strategic substituting will start uh, at this point. Cortez 
Tries to chip it on goal, coming across the other way, looking for Tamayo, but too far. Very nice ball by Cortez. Keeper could not uh, commit on that one. Under 14 minutes to go now. There's Dave Cortez, Sam Cortez, check it. Gira sends it down. And back for Andy Gallagher trying to clear it for the defense. Throw in here for Sandberg again. Tamayo. Going down. Again, it's close right on. Again, that might have grazed the crossbar. Chipped up by Zach. Now and then there'll be a goal kick for Palatine. Our next IHSA event on Sports Channel, Boys and Girls Cross Country, Sunday, November 14th at 9 p.m. Tune in. We'll bring you the 93 IHSA Boys and Girls Cross Country Championships. Under 13 minutes to go here. That's Carl Sandberg. Tries for his first state tournament title. Sam Cortez on the throw in. You, know, you talk about uh, the quality of the play in the uh, SICA, and I know Ryan Pop is very outspoken about that. He thinks they're getting a bad ride. And I think a uh, state championship, if they get it, will certainly go a long way in dispelling a lot of those. It would be the first title in any sport at Sandberg High, which happened just a couple of weeks ago when Hinsdale Central got their first title. Naperville Central. Naperville Central, excuse me. Yeah. That's why you're the yeah. athletic director at Main East. Yeah. Well, Ross Pump is right here, too. He'd want, he'd want us <laughs> to That's right. Sure I saw Ross right. there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'd never get out of this press box alive. That one, too. And Ross Pump. I want to thank our host here at Naperville North, too. And Feigl, who just went out uh, a minute ago, has gotten his rest and is back in. And here comes Tony Francella. And down he goes. Shot on goal. Well, it is Nick Polonitis. He's been close all night, and he dents the net. A, are they waving it off, or are they calling yeah, it off? Yeah, yeah. There was a foul there, and, and uh, Eddie Rubin has waved it off. He's the official. Let's we'll take a look. He, he called it on. Uh, he, he called it on on the friend's player, but it's really Frangella who just runs right over him. They both go down. I I think the uh, I think the wrong guy got the rap there. But Eddie's uh, used to be a player of mine about 25 years ago, so I better not uh, criticize him too hard. No goal. This will be a direct kick from right outside the penalty area with Colonitis, Feigl, and Zek. And the kick wide to the right. Again, a Morrissey. So and a very nice set piece there. And, and not too far wide either. Two goals disallowed tonight. One for each side now. That's the uh, sixth shot uh, by Colonitis in the half. Well, he's been around for a all day, all night, we should say. That was the first one that really had some mustard to it. Yeah. There's Colonitis again, and this one is intercepted by the defense. Looks like Pinion got a body into that. Ten minutes to go here in the second half. One nothing Sandberg leading in white. Early goal has stood up so far. Coming around here it's Feigl. Feigl coming in on left wing has it broken up. Oh, have a throw in Sandberg. Well there's Josh. He was double teamed over there. He couldn't. Uh, he got the best he could out of that play, which was a throw in. Come on, Green. Let's go. Go, Green. Let's get the down. And it will be a long one. There it is, and again it's close by. Tipped away by the defense of Fremd, and out it comes. Toronto got a piece of Tim Gera, no call here. We're going to be a Viking throw. This is McDermott, has it taken away by Frangella. Frangella looking down for Feigl, and Feigl on the right cross. 
no white shirts there to do anything as it goes right in front of the keeper Morrissey. Feigl just picked uh, Mike Strait's pocket there in the corner and almost created another real good opportunity. Well, we have a minute. Let's thank our hosts here at Naperville North, Neil McCall, the athletic director, of course, Dave Cooper, the boys soccer coach, John Gilly, all the folks up here in the press box who have been helpful to us as well as the IHSA. Marty Hickman and company. Eight and a half minutes to go, and of course, all kinds of Illinois State High School championship action. Here on Sports Channel, our football fest for Thanksgiving, the 1A through 6A. We'll have that for you. From uh, Wilmington Normal, Illinois State, cross country, swimming, right here. Bible heading it up. And the clock starting to become a factor as we approach the eight minute mark. Tamayo, number eight, heading it. And here is Cortez for Sandberg. And De Silva trying to pick his pocket, but Cortez avoids him. Leonidas, here comes Nick again. Right foots this one. To the left of Kevin Morrison. That is his seventh shot uh, this half. Uh, the Eagles have outshot the Vikings 13 to 2 in the second half, so Fremd has not had the opportunities they need. Sandberg is not sitting on a lead by any means. Colonitis gets it in the middle to Frangella. Frangella, and this one rolls over to Morrissey. 7.20 to go here. That's punt by Morrissey crossing the midfield line. The first time in, it seems like ages that uh, the ball has been in Sandberg territory at all. Here it comes back again. And here comes Colonitis. Toronto looking up for Taylor who had a rest and he's back. Down he goes. And the ball had already been put over the touch line. Big sliding no foul there and that was not called. There's Gira. Tim Gira. They better make this one count. They're not going to get too many more, I don't think. Andy Thomas throwing in, looking in the middle for Taylor. Hands and they're going to play. Ends up. Turn around. Did he get it? No, off the no, side. Off the side. Yeah. As Chris Molenda turned offensive. Well, he's been offensive with those fouls, too. <laughs> uh, you can see, as you were saying, Bob, Sandberg has been out shooting, but Friend came right close there off the foot of Chris Molenda, the junior. Down comes Josh Little. He's got the silver with him. Now looking into Taylor. A nice play there. One of the rare combinations that's put together by Fram. Nicely done, but Taylor came up wide. De, Sil De Silva carrying the ball down. That is De Silva. No. McDermott. Taylor right there. Can't, can't be. Uh, there was Josh Little on that nice pass. one up. Coming inside again, looking for help. And that is Donovan. High and wide. But again, it's a uh, keep it down at this end to protect their lead. Those shots, uh, even though it was 20 feet high, good strategy. Snow flurries resume. Clock under five minutes. And Fram has got to put some action on the board here as Little tries to send it down, and he does get it to the Silva. Back to Little. Around the referee. And there is Molenda. And this one, again, from about 35 yards away. Wide of the goal. Three passes across the field from the left side to the right side, and I think Melinda was a little premature. There was one more pass that he had over to the touchline that would have opened it up even further. Shooting from there into the wind, I don't think was uh, a good decision. Reagan. Taking the trip. And coming back, Peter Pinion is in. 
for Shrimp, and here it comes back out as Shrimp trying to put the pressure on. Exactly four minutes left. Shrimp in there, Carranza in the middle, a lot of white shirts. Back it comes. There's Josh Little. Met by Donnellan. Left foot over there by McDermott. Nine white shirts back in here. They are packing them all in for Brian Papa. Three and a half minutes to go. A little flurry there by Frank. They had nothing seriously to challenge. Chris Polk. Now both teams cheering sections trying to get rubbed up. Sandberg to the Isis State title. Frank to try to get something to equalize it. Over the touchline, out of bounds, and there you see a lot of the green and gold. Under three minutes to go now. And here comes Cortez. Cortez looking inside for Frangella. It's a foul on Frangella. Frangella. There's a foul over there. Two and a half to go. Frank's going to make it pretty soon. 220 left on the clock. Little tries to send it up for Carranza. And back it comes. Well kicked out of there by Brian Hurts. One goal came at a minute 53. Off the head of Josh Bible has stood up. This is he needs to go. And right here, here it comes. Again. Once again. Looks like it was uh, Frangella who just hit the top of the crossbar. Otherwise, that game would have been iced. Dropped that ball right on top of the crossbar. They didn't hit the face. He's got time. He's, he knows enough to lift it. Good decision. And it'll drop on the top and bounce over. No chance to bounce here at all. Clock is running a minute 30 to go. Now they stop it. There's Morris. He's got to make this one. I think uh, referee uh, Ruben has uh, told his partner over on the, on the bench, the official on the bench over there, I believe it's Ken Morrow, not to allow Brian Papa to, to substitute on every opportunity. That is ungentlemanly. He'll stop the clock if he sees that happening. They put more time on the clock. About five or six seconds now. There's a minute and a half to go. We get a foul here. The foul will be. A dangerous play on uh, Taylor there. And Marty Regan will take the direct kick with a minute 22. Out it comes to Taylor. There's going to be no ball. So again, it'll be a throw in for Sandberg. Bach now ticking down a minute eight. Sandberg bench barely able to control itself as the throw in goes out of bounds. So here we go. Final 55 seconds here. And once again, Sandberg will clear. Tim Gira getting a good foot into it, and here's a throw in coming for a friend with 44 seconds left. So Melinda gets it up to strike. Strike trying to head it up to the attack line. And Josh Feigl, the man who scored the goal, just made the big defensive play here. 25 seconds. There's the clock. Right front of your picture, the snow flurries are bringing winter, but they're bringing a state championship to Sandberg. 15 seconds to go. The celebration has started. Oh, Park's going to be a happy place tonight. Last chance right here for Sun, but it will not be enough. The uh, 
second undefeated team to go all the way and win a championship. And Ryan Popper and Carl Sandberg High School. Piling on, no penalty here. The Eagles have landed. And some respect and credibility for Sika Soccer. Sandberg High School gets the warm reception from teammates, fans, coaches, parents. It's quite a time. Sandberg won from nothing. Sandberg, the state champions, will be back. There's the final score. The Eagles of Carl Sandburg High School, the new Illinois High School Association Boys State Soccer Champions. An early goal that stood up one to nothing. The final over a game bunch of Vikings from Friend High School. Well, I am here with the only man to score tonight. Fitting that it be the All-America, Josh Feigl, the biggest goal of your career is the last one you scored. Yeah, it would have to be. Um, the greatest moment of, uh, of definitely this year and uh, I'm sure my whole career. It was, uh, I mean, a great win for the team. The first time down here, we really showed everyone, you know, what the what the South Side has. Well, you know, I heard a lot of that, that the South Side had to prove itself tonight. They certainly did. Let's take a look at the goal right here. It came off a set piece off the corner kick. Why don't you describe it, Josh? Um, Nikki, Nikki t all takes all of our corner kicks. I was lined up at the far post, and it came over everyone, and I was just waiting there for it and put it in uh, upper left corner. And that came at the second minute, a minute 53 into the game. Did you think at that point it might be enough, or did you uh, think you'd have to go for more? Not at all. I knew we still had a lot of work to do, and uh, it was just a great feeling to get the first goal and score early. Okay, also joining Bob and me and uh, Josh, the winning coach, Brian Papa. you got to say uh, this is a highlight of a pretty long and uh, meritorious career. Yeah, very, very highlight. Big highlight. Big highlight. You know, Josh, Josh mentioned the idea that the South Side had something to prove. How do you feel about that? Well, we are. It's, it's been 10 years of listening how South Side can't do this, whether it be at the Prairie State, whether it be in the tournaments, whatever. But we finally came through, and we got our chance down here, and we showed good. Uh, Brother Rice was down here, final. But we got two from the South Suburbs in the final, and we won the state, and that's... That's case. Definitely. This is a largely senior team. Obviously, you've been building to this for quite some time. Do you feel fulfilled at this point? Oh, yeah, definitely. I, you don't want anybody uh, to lose this game. This, I mean, everything. <laughs> Everybody was right there, ready to go. And But hey, I'm just happy. I don't know. I, I'm going to tell you guys. <laughs> Bob, you got, a, tell you got any questions from Brian? Well, I'm just checking. I noticed the new hairstyle uh, there and, and, and some rumor that that's the, the sick of hairstyle for the future. Are you going to do that? It's a rumor. Rumor. Don't believe it. <laughs> don't believe it until you see it tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Can we, can we fit coach across the back of your head there? You don't, don't, know, you don't, don't have a number. I know. That's what I told him. There's no number, so there's no, no spot. Yeah, we've got to show you this. matter of fact, come on back here now. We were talking about this, but obviously in a soccer match, you can't really get too good a shot of this. Would you turn around there, uh, young Josh? Take a look here. This is... I just want to know, we all know what the number is. There it is. Okay, come on back this way. Whose idea was it, and um, and how did this all happen? Um, we've had some team dinners uh, every night before all our uh, all our playoff games. Team bonding, you know, this was something that brought us close together. We may look, you know, we may look <laughs> funny, but we all loved it. You want to apologize to all your mothers right now? Yeah, I'm uh, <laughs> sorry. All right, listen, we know there are a lot of people you want to see. It's been a cold evening for you, but a very warm one in terms of accomplishment. Congratulations yeah. to all of you at Sandberg High School. Take care, guys. You can take off now. Okay, Bob, let's take a look at the scoring summary. Not much of one, but as far as Sandberg's concerned, it couldn't be any better. No, we thought we had one in the first uh, 20 seconds going the other way, and then it came back to, uh, to Sandberg excellent game and there is respect now I think for the Sika and obviously for Sandberg congratulations and as far as Josh Feigl is concerned two-time All-America a lot of schools are interested in him he certainly showed a, a, a lot of strength as well as a lot of touch uh, he's an outstanding player soccer players are getting bigger I think you're gonna see that uh, that kind of size kid we're gonna see more of them all right well as the snow continues to come down here a lot of happy folks are heading back to Orland Park we hope you've enjoyed this one as Carl Sandberg, Sandberg High School has become the 1993 Illinois High School Association Boys State Soccer Championship. At this time, Sports Channel would like to thank H. David Fry and Marty Hickman of the Illinois High School Association for making this championship event possible. 
Also, thanks to Neil McCauley and Dr. Dave Booker of Naperville North High School here for their cooperation in coordinating this event. It's been a lot of fun. Tonight's game has been produced and directed by Jim Corno Jr., graphics coordinator Ron Storto. Remote facility is provided by Trio Video of Chicago. Our executive producer is Greg Bowman. Once again, the final score, the Eagles of Sandburg High School won. The Vikings of Rand High School, nothing. The IHSA boys soccer champions, the Eagles of Carl Sandburg High. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of Sports Channel. So long, everybody.